Okay, and I've just begun recording. Uh, one of our members, Dan uh, Valentine, can't be with us tonight. So I told him we would record so that he could review everything that was discussed. Sounds good. And I, I know Lex said that he had briefed you. What we had hoped to do tonight was to obtain some design uh, measurements uh, or numbers from Park Mobile relative to our parking spaces. And we have two different types of parking spaces. One is on-street parking on Main Street and the intersecting streets, and then two, if not more, uh, parking lots that are probably um, a thousand feet away from Main Street, maybe more. Sure. One of those lots is currently in existence. It has uh, 38 spaces. Um, still to capacity most weekends. Um, the second lot exists, but is not currently metered. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, I'm so sorry. I, uh, so I'm in California this month, and uh, so I'm testing out my, my Zoom meetings and different connections between my parents' home and my sister's home. So uh, this room works much better. Oh, God, yes. Um, this is yes. much better. Okay. Uh, but just know, I'll be wearing a mask just for a couple of days while we make sure everybody's safe. Okay. And Rebecca, on the line with us is Dave Holler, who is uh, in uh, because Lex Blum can't uh, join us tonight. Uh, Jack Goldstein is coming online now. Hi, Jack. Hi. Sorry. No, no problem. Dave hasn't joined us yet, so um, we're still waiting for him. Jack, this is uh, Dave Holler on the on the line with us. Hi, Dave. Hey, Jack. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. Hello. Are you re you're really in, you're really in California? I am. Are you coming um, back? No. <laughs> no, I'm coming back. Um, I'm just going to be here for about a month. Oh. Uh, and then, yeah, it's a long, so Timmy's having to hold down the fort, but uh, I'm here with my parents for, to help out with some family issues. And I'm thinking it's going to be about a month. So that's what I'm pre preparing for. Yeah. Have you packed all those lunches or is that going to be Tim's responsibility too? Yeah, we got a new staff member, so uh, she's taking, you know, some of my responsibilities there. I've taken on some of the things digitally that I'm able to handle on Fridays when we do the Dairy Box program. Yeah. Um, that mainly serves locals, but uh, I, I know it's going to be tough. I, Memorial Day, I he, we know what's coming, so or we think we know what's coming, so we're pre he's preparing for it with the staff. Okay, so I've just texted texted Dave to see if he's going to be joining us. I haven't gotten a response yet. Someone just came on, but not uh, fully. Yeah, I don't see anybody yet. Okay, so uh, Dave, Lex said that he had briefed you. On our main street, sorry, the village. The village is very small, 0.6 square miles. We only have one metered parking lot now, as I mentioned. And what we would like to do is um, use the Park Mobile app to provide paid parking on our main street and the intersecting side streets. The, um, the way the village currently um, exists, we have a large influx of visitors on Saturdays and Sundays, and, and that's moving to Fridays as well. With the better weather coming along, uh, we would expect a, a large number of people walking our main street, going to the river, um, uh, visiting some of the parks, 
on those three days. We have a very high number. Oh, and we're on the Metro North uh, train line, uh, the Hudson line. So we get a lot of people coming off the train. We have a, a very large number of people driving into the village. Um, as I said, the major parking problem is currently Saturdays and Sundays and somewhat on Fridays. Um, so one of the things we would like is recommendations for whether or not we should, uh, sorry, let me back up. Our current parking lot is metered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we're going to leave it that way. The second parking lot that we're looking at uh, establishing is a currently existent uh, set of number, parking spaces diagonal to the roadbed. Uh, and we would expect to um, have that park, um, uh, park by space. The current parking lot is parked by space. They're numbered, but Main Street, we will would park by plate. So I guess the first question is, uh, what days of the week should we consider? What hours of the day should we consider? This is for Main Street and the intersecting streets. So days of the week, hours of the day, and rates. Any suggestions? Um, yeah, I mean, we don't we don't usually get into too much of the nitty gritty of the actual setup of of rates and hours. We can certainly give you some information at implementation based on what other customers have done. Um, but typically it's like, a, you know, eight to 6 p.m. type thing. Um, usually just in general, on-street parking is shorter term. So like one or two hours to encourage turnover. Um, and then off-street would be the longer terms, like four hours, eight hours daily parking. Um, Certainly, if you feel like Main Street, you know, you wanted a longer duration, you could offer, say, a four-hour parking term. Um, and you usually can dictate that behavior of short versus long term with the rates. So um, you may have a higher rate, for example, on street with a shorter duration. Um, so let's say, you know, just throwing out numbers, but let's say it's $2 an hour. Um, and then in the lots, it's only a dollar an hour, for example, but you could park all day. So you can accomplish a lot with the rates by, um, you know, having a higher rate where you want the parking spaces to turn over, um, you know, in the shops on Main Street. And then if somebody does want to stay all day, um, it's a lower rate, you know, off street. And that would also encourage employees to, to maybe park there instead of taking that prime parking real estate on street as well. Okay. Relative to um, employee parking, we're looking at establishing a separate section of the village that would be, would have employee permits associated mm -hmm. with it. And the permits uh, we're thinking would be in the range of maybe $10 a month. And that would be for employees. We're also looking at uh, finding some more spaces for residents who live on Main Street who do not have off street parking. Um, and we have not, I don't think we've discussed what rate we might charge them. On the side street, we are going to be implementing a residential parking district for which we have received legislature approval. And we've run those numbers. And what we would do there is we would set a certain number of those spaces for non-residential parking and a certain number of spaces for residential parking and we would probably charge something like, and this is just for administrative costs, $10 a year for a person who is a resident on those streets to be able to park there. And, and we would probably do that with a, um, a rearview mirror hanger that would be easily identified by uh, the police uh, for someone who wish to purchase a residential parking permit um, uh, tag. And the other thing we've been considering right now, the um, lot that we have, the municipal lot that we have is currently a uh, dollar an hour, uh, 24 hours a day. 
Um, so uh, I just got a text from Dave. He can't make it tonight. He has no internet. Yeah, that's like my do the dog ate my homework. Um, so we are thinking that the two remote parking lots are close to the uh, trails um, that the hikers use and they tend to park earlier in the morning and stay for seven or eight hours. So we were thinking of upping the rate in the municipal lots significantly higher than a dollar an hour because it tends to attract a particular type of person. And then lowering that rate at five o'clock when the hikers tend to clear out. Um, and, and Dave and I have had bandied about uh, $4 an hour. You could also do what we see with a lot of clients is in, a, in an area like that where it's primarily, um, well, you could do one flat rate, like a daily rate. And you could even, the way our system's set up, um, you can have everything's in zone. So main streets, all one zone, um, the lots, one zone, and then our rate engine, you can have different rates per hour, different rates per days. Um, so you get like a weekend daily rate and maybe on the weekdays, you just offer that, um, that hourly rate as well. You can also do either or. So if I'm pulling into that lot and I only want to, you know, stay for a couple hours and have lunch, I can, I can buy two hours at that hourly rate, or I could get the flat rate, um, daily rate as well. So there's a lot we can do with the rate structure, depending on, you know, what, what your goals are for the program. What would, what would be the daily rate times? Uh, Typically. we can do it. Yeah. We could do it like a flat, like all day, all day rate, um, yeah. or do it like it ends at, at midnight. So whatever, however you want to do it, it can be, you know, it can be eight hours. It could be till midnight or it could be 24 hours. So really okay. just however, however you want to set it up, the system's pretty but, flexible. So what, what are we talking about in that particular instance, Marie? This would be the municipal lot, Jack, on Fair Street. Okay. And this and the second lot on Fair Street. Okay. We hadn't even considered a daily rate, but but that would be very attractive to the hikers. It seems yep. to me an, an eight hour rate. Well, and I know that um, that's what uh, Hastings on Hudson does. They, they have a $20 um, daily rate for their park down near the water right. and they sell it out. Right. It, and it's interesting, um, Dave, uh, our, our mayor, Dave Morandi, um, did an experiment last October. Now, this was still at the height of the pandemic. Um, and he allowed people to park in the, in the area. Um, we have a, um, what's called Mayor's Park. It has a ball field in it. Um, and he allowed cars to park in outside of the ball field, but within the enclosure. And the place was $20. Nobody batted an eye. And he brought in over $4,000 just on yep. one Saturday. Um, and I know so some, uh, as, as Yankee games are coming back as well, um, I know some of the Metro North um, train stations will do like an event rate for Yankee games, um, people taking the train to, uh, to Yankee Stadium. So anything like that. We can even do special event rates that override the normal rate. So, okay. um, I, for example, I've, I, when I used to uh, work in Terrytown, I, I would park at the train station in Terrytown and they had like a cash Yankee stadium rate that was totally separate from the normal train station parking. So you could have an event rate tied to Yankee games and have a flat fee of whatever you want to charge for those games. And that would override the normal hourly or, or daily rate. So there's a lot of flexibility we can have with, so, and you can shift shift rates on the fly as well. So if you have a festival in town, um, you could push out that event rate to to the app in whatever zones you want to. Um, and we can even have messages pop up in the app for the user that says, hey, you're, you're parking in a zone that has a special event rate today. It's different than you know, the normal rate. So it's, it's very clear to the consumer that it may be a different rate today, for example. So 
there's a lot we can do with the rates and the and the in-app messaging. So, so Dave, that I've never asked this question before. I come into Cold Spring. I'm a stranger. I want to park on Main Street. I find a space. I look up, and there's the park mobile sign. So I I have the app on my phone, and I say, I want to I want to park for five hours. And we don't want people to park for five hours on Main Street. Will the app say, sorry, you can't park for five hours. You can park for two hours. Yeah, so depending, so if they go into a zone where it's two hour parking, they'd only be allowed to select up to two hours. So okay. it's, it's dependent on that zone, that time of day, that day of the week, it's all set up. We create a whole zone and rate structure for Cold Spring with all of your rates, all of your rules. Um, you know, for based on the zone they're in, the day of the week, et cetera. So they wouldn't be able to choose five hours um, when they when they select that zone. And when they, do they and when do they find out how much it is? How much? An um, hour? They they would see it as they're selecting it. Um, it shows them if they select two hours. They have a a, a, a screen that would show them. You know, it's it, let's say it's a it's a dollar an hour. It would show them. It's the total fee is two dollars and thirty five cents. So it's two dollars an hour or, or two dollars for the two hours plus our our transaction fee. So they're able to confirm that final price before they click, you know, park and pay. Gotcha. Dave, when you, when you mentioned, you know, um, building a, a designing a structure for all of this. Does that actually take a form that we can use to convey what it is we're proposing to the public? In other words, is there a matrix or some sort of chart where all of these decisions are laid out for us because we have a public meeting coming up and then we have a public hearing coming up. And what concerns me is people being able to grasp the design of what we're doing. Yeah, and that's and that's kind of the goal. We'd encourage you to to publish it on the village's website, um, have it available at those meetings, so it's it is very clear to the end users, um, you know. And and we we try to we try to set it up, and and our implementations team again will work with you to identify any gaps. So if there's something that's confusing or there's a gap in the rates, we'll let you know as we're building it out. So, but but definitely. Um, Communication and, and education is very important when you're rolling this out so that people understand what the options are and, and you know how to do it and how much they're gonna pay. But what's the what, what's the time frame all of that? Let's say you're engaged um, and um, we have to have something ready for a public meeting, which is a you know um, where the public can ask questions and comment. And we need, let's say, a draft matrix. Uh, it, can that be done so that we can get reaction to what it is that we're proposing? Yeah, we we typically get that from the client, so we we lean on you to kind of design that. We we can ingest all those rates and structure, and again, we can give you kind of some some tips. And I think what what the mayor did is is important as well, which is. Hey, Hastings is doing, uh, you know, a $20 daily rate for a similar lot. So that's what a lot of clients will do is kind of a quick informal survey of a couple area towns to say, all right, here's a couple, here's Hudson's rate on street, um, which we did, we deployed, uh, or we'll be, we'll be deploying in Hudson shortly. Um, but look at, you know, um, on street, their, their lots, and then you know, that that's helpful for the consumer too, that it's a, it's a, you know, kind of a standard rate in the area that helps them, um, you know, uh, town to town, it's not significantly higher or lower. You're, you're pricing the parking accordingly. So just a quick kind of survey of, Hey, where are your rates at? And then we can take all of that and, and let you know if there's any gaps or, you know, any questions on it. Yeah, but, but, I, but I'm asking very specifically, let's say we feed you all this information of mm -hmm. what, what we what the committee wants to propose to the public at this point and let's yep. say, let's say we have five zones you know two on main street the mayor's park the parking lot and one up on 9d and they're going to have different 
operations within them. Is there actually a chart that you all can produce that will help us convey that, or do we need to construct that ourselves? We, words, ha we have what's called a zone and rate structure, and it's really just an Excel spreadsheet of locations, um, rates. So we, we do have that, and then you could, you could use that as kind of the basis for it. So yeah, we have that, which will kind of be a good starting point for you. Okay. Can you send, yeah, can you send, can you send us that, Dave, or yeah. let's send it to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rebecca, if we have an Excel sheet with the data on it, is there a basic, I'm thinking now of the PowerPoint, okay? Is there a basic chart option on PowerPoint where we could fill in this information that's on the spreadsheet to make it easier for people to see. I think you can. I think yeah, I mean, I think we could turn in every, I think we could uh, take any document and create a PDF from it. And then when you create the PDF, you can, uh, you could turn it into a JPEG so it's an image and put into the PowerPoint. That's what I did with the Google map. I don't know if you felt that it was clear enough. Um, uh, th this would just be a grid basically and it would say zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, and then there would be, you know, uh, time of day, rate of, of uh, whatever, and so that you would actually have a matrix that would match a map, you know, so people would know. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, right. I'm thinking of communication. So the Excel so, sheet almost yeah. also has like the color coded. Yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm, all right, it's not really Dave's issue, but I was just wondering whether you provide sort of presentation tools as part of this service. Ma mainly, um, mainly related to really specifically to our service. So it's screenshot of the app or yeah. a demo. Okay. Of the app. Um, okay. But we, what we could probably do is I can have Lex um, maybe find a couple of, of clients that have done something similar and, and show you what they've done with yeah. their app. So we have a lot of clients who will put that together like a map of their downtown and it, it's color coded with um, so the matrix says all day parking and it shows you those two lots um, flat rate or hourly rate of three dollars and then main street side streets um, hourly parking four hour max and it's um, you know two dollars an hour so they will have it where it shows you the zones and we can that show you be, examples of what clients have done there that would be great if, if he could if he could do that it would help us a lot to um, yeah, it would help us a lot. One more question. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Jack, really quick. I, I was trying to preempt this like two weeks ago. I had called the same uh, villages and municipalities that yeah. uh, that Trustee Early gave us the um, yeah. the contact information for. And so I, I, I reached out to them to ask them, what, what are your fees? What does that look like? So that we have we could sort of uh, prove that we've done our due diligence in terms of finding a fair price. Um, but I didn't get calls back, which makes sense because uh, it might take some time to, uh, but I could reach out to the people that I reached out to, um, but it would be super helpful if we would get that information from Park Mobile to, to, to take a look at, yeah, the wide spectrum well, and I'm, I'm thinking more, again, from the point of view of the communications and the presentation that we're doing, the presentation tools to um, make it easier for people to understand. That's, that's all, because, uh, I, you know, I've been getting questions which lead me to believe that there's a lot of sort of confusion out there, and we are presenting something which is complicated. So anything, any examples of how other villages have sold the concept, sold their design, 
they're, they're metering design to the public, that would be really helpful, I think. Um, and also, in terms of the signs, you know, if we have five zones, is the sign gonna say you're in zone one? It will. And then each sign has uh, a Q code on it. It has what, the email address uh, and it has a phone number, right? It's, it typically has, um, and we've, we've just come out with some new signage. We actually have new ways to pay, which include um, a text to park option or um, a guest checkout option, which is actually, you know, let's say you're visiting Cold Spring, you don't, you don't have the app, um, you don't even have to download the app. You can just go through a, like a web checkout on your phone, pay that way. Um, but it would give them the zone really clear. It would say Park Mobile, it'd have our brand, so they recognize that if they're an app user. Um, and then the Village of Cold Springs logo, the zone. Um, there is there is an 800 number typically on there if they need some assistance, um, and then a QR code they could they could get right to the to the uh, guest checkout that way as well or uh, or the app store. So um, okay. there's no extra fee for the web checkout or any of the other options. No. Nope. Okay. Dave, I'm I'm interested in what Hudson has established as their rates because. In my mind, Hudson has a similar visitation on weekends. I, I believe, yeah, I believe um, Hudson was a little different because I believe they're just doing um, the uh, the transit lot. I don't think they're doing on street. Okay. And I think they have a five dollar uh, max rate um, for the for the transit lot, the train station lot. So I think that's all they're doing. They're not. Uh, on street, maybe another phase, but they're just launching at the um, because they had had mobile pay and that provider um, is no longer in business. It was a, a very small competitor of ours that went out of business last year, so they were looking for another another option there. But um, yeah, ideally they'd launch on street as well at some point. Okay, but I believe it is five dollars. Dave, I have a quick question. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Dave, I have a quick question. Um, so, uh, you know, I had a friend who who has dipped his, he has uh, done some park, parking work, but mainly in the city. So people, when, when you tell them that, you know, they, they're like, well, that's a totally different beast. Um, and he, you know, he came in literally for 10 minutes, said hi, and kind of saw what was happening on a busy Saturday and said, oh, like right away when I started talking about to, to him about parking, because we he's an urban planner and uh, he's a friend of mine. So I just, he knows a little bit about our challenge and some of the challenges that the village has. And I said, oh, that's right. I meant to tell you, I'm on the parking committee. I was going to tell you about this because I was going to try to ask your feedback. And he said, automatically, he said, well, you should definitely do one hour street parking on the main street and two hours on the side streets, the side street locations, uh, parking spots that you have. And, um, you know, I, I, I didn't uh, really think anything of that because the, the, but I had recalled that what we were looking at is possibly doing two hours with a maximum of three. Um, but I was thinking, would, would you, do you have any thoughts in regards to one hour to two hour for that main street? And, you know, it's only, it's, it's such a small stretch, but just curious. Yeah, the, the issue yeah. is probably from the consumer standpoint, um, an hour is probably too short. You know, if you're coming in, I'm assuming, and it's, and it's been a few years, I've been, I've been to Cold Spring, but it's been a few years. But I'm assuming this Main Street, it's a lot of shops, a lot of restaurants, right? Yeah. Um, you know, if I if I show up um, coming up there from Rye on a Saturday and I park and I, I shop for an hour, then I get something to eat. It, it could easily become two or three hours. So I think most most I would say most Main Streets, most downtowns have it more of a two to two to four hour max. Um, an hour, you know, might be tough to. You, you could dedicate some spaces that are just an hour, 
like very high turnover or even you know like a 15 or 30 minute um like free parking area where you if you're just running in you're a resident you're running in for a cup of coffee on the weekend um you know you're you're in and out so you have you can have some zones like that um or some spaces i should say but i i would say more typical is like that two to kind of four hours um it's accomplished with like i said the rates and the enforcement as well so if people know they can park there all day and never get a ticket and never pay they'll they'll obviously do that but if they know again not being heavy-handed with enforcement you have visitors but knowing that if you don't pay, you'll, you'll get a ticket at some point, um, you know, that'll, that'll discourage it. So at least if there's parking enforcement or, or the PD, at least checking people know they have to be compliant and you accomplish it with that, with that on-street rate, that's a little higher than moving that on side streets or, or, or off street even where it's longer term and, uh, and, and a little cheaper. So you, you're, you're saving that really, um, you know, um, desirable on-street parking um, to be a higher rate and, and lower lower duration. So that'd be my two cents. If, if we have a three-hour maximum, that doesn't mean someone has to stay three hours. They can exactly yep can put in for an hour. So yep. you know I I I I don't I guess I I have a, a growing sense of alarm that we're reaching a point where we really need to make some basic decisions that are common sense and obviously not off the wall. And then we're going to have, and it's one of the advantages of your system, we're going to have to see how it works out. And we can modify those decisions that we make if, they, if they're proving to be out of touch with what the demand is on a certain day or in a certain week or something like that. But um, I, I don't think there's. Jack, an... I wasn't Jack. I wasn't push, just so you know. I, I'm not pushing for one hour at all. Yeah. I was just trying to understand a little bit more of of the thinking behind. No, the I, 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 and I do, do understand, and there are lots of people out there who know a lot about it and their own experiences with it. But I think we may have reached a point of diminishing returns in trying to try to find an analog with Cold Spring because it, I'm not sure there is one beyond what we already know. And so that, um, as I say, I, I, any decision that we make in listening to Dave, I, I think I'm confirmed in that, any decision that we make is gonna be within the realms of a rational starting point. And that, but that I think we need to make it and, and then see how it plays out in terms of its viability and its, and it's, um, you know, reception by the public, but I don't know. That's just, that's just my opinion. And we, we also have a, an entire um, uh, reporting system on the back end that staff will have access to, which will give you a lot of data about the system. So you can look back six, nine, 12 months later, look at each zone, um, you can see by time of day where people are parking, uh, what payment types they're using, what if they're using um, Apple devices or Android, um, credit card, PayPal, um, you know, what the occupancy is, um, a lot of data that will come in that you'll be able to kind of tweak the system based on that. So we, we always encourage clients, you know, keep it as simple as possible, you know, for, for your sake, for the consumer's sake. Um, like you were saying, Jack, you know, having that outreach program leading up to this, that will help. But if it's as, as simple as possible, where it's, you know, you've got a flat daily rate, you've got one rate on street and it's hourly with uh, whatever you decide on two, three, four hour max. Um, yeah. And then you can always tweak it later, but kind of keep it simple and then, you know, reevaluate. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I do. Yeah. Dave, Dave, two questions. What are the advantages and disadvantages of a two hour limit with a one hour extension versus 
a three hour maximum? Just, um, I, I would say just kind of more, more flexibility. If you just have, um, you know, if you just say, you know, uh, an hourly rate up to three hours, then um, it just makes it easier for the consumer to choose. I'm here for 30 minutes. I'm here for an hour. We can do increments of 15, 30, an hour. Um, but I would encourage it again to keep it kind of simple. So it's, you can, you can go up to that three hour max if you're not sure how long or you're running in for a quick errand, you could select 30 minutes. So we try to make it as, as simple as possible. Um, but I, yeah, I would do it that way where it's just an hourly rate. You could, you know, you could select um, any increment you, you, you'd like based on your stay. Okay. Uh, second question. Do you have many uh, communities um, which do not inf do not require uh, payment on certain days of the week? Sure. Yeah, pretty typical. Um, I would say the predominance of our clients don't charge on Sundays. Um, there's certainly operations that are seven days a week. Some don't charge on Saturdays, but I would say our most typical municipal client is six days a week. Um, having said that, you can always have, like I said, a Monday through Friday rate and then a weekend rate. So um, I would say now, especially kind of post COVID where we have a lot of like, uh, you know, state parks, county parks, um, like you said, people are going to the trail on the weekend. So certainly it's, it's a big shift where pre COVID the most business we did and the most transactions we see or we saw were in like the Washington DC or Philadelphia, where it was millions of commuters coming into a city center every day and, and parking. We did our highest transactions during the week. Now, um, starting last summer, everybody was trying to hike or bike or kayak or boat, you know, get outside. All these parks, all these beaches, we're now seeing higher, um, you know, weekend numbers than we've ever saw. So if you have that weekend traffic with visitors from the city or people hiking, um, you could certainly do seven days a week, but have, you know, have different rates weekdays versus weekends if you want to do it that way too so okay. it's it's all about that demand if you have demand on saturday and sunday you probably want to have you know the uh the parking fees to uh to uh to to catch that and and we could for instance traditionally january through march maybe are fairly dead months here and and you know uh, this winter we had a pretty bad winter and so and some shops aren't even open so we could simply turn it off right yeah, yeah and and certainly um and again that's really the flip of a switch you can let us know through your account manager or you're going to have again that back end um management software to be able to log in and you could push out can be a lot of clients will do it around the holidays. It used to be you bag the meters, and it said happy holidays. Now yeah. we essentially bag the meters with the app. And when you go, we, you go to pay, it would just say happy holidays from Village of Cold Spring. Parking is free right now. You could do the same in winter months. We have a lot of seasonal clients, you know, um, Dewey Beach, Rehoboth Beach, Ocean City, you know, Maryland, Delaware, where they're, they're only charging for parking during the beach season. So you essentially just shut the app off. Um, if somebody does try to go in and pay, it would just tell them parking is, is, is you know, not, not being charged right now. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I, I, I keep a, a, a spreadsheet that shows the um, uh, month and year comparisons of our muni municipal lot for the past five years. Uh -huh. of interest to me was in 2020 during the height of the pandemic August September and October we exceeded four thousand dollars a month on the meter where we never came close to that in the prior four years uh -huh. thus far this year we are almost down from where we were in 20, 2016 in other words, the demand at the meter is lower now than it was five years ago. You mean at the so parking lot? The park, 
it's almost as if we don't have as many people parking now than, than we did five years ago. Very interesting. Well, yeah, but I, you know, trying to trying to go forward based on even the past three four years, considering what's gone on in the past three four years, it's I think it's a little bit difficult. Um, you know, last August, September, October, we were overrun with visitors, as yes. you recall, both on the yes. train and everywhere, because yes. people were feeling like they could get out. The weather yes. was nice. They were hugely busy during the weekdays and weekends, because, you know, the parks had to be closed on weekends, you remember. Right. Right. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I guess it's a little... It's curious that our, uh, um, where are we now? April, well, let's say February. You know, again, I, I think this winter may have been a whole lot worse than the winter in 2016, so that people weren't on the roads as much. It's just, I think it's very hard to extrapolate trends from you know, uh, what do you call them again? Window, you know, uh, screen, you know, thumbnail shots of particular, of particular moments when there are a lot of variables affecting it. Okay. Um, I, anyway, it, it, a lot of it's speculation, Marie, and, yeah. you know, and what we're going to be as a village and a whole lot of people who I speak to are can, and, and it's not the merchant community, this is residential, um, are convinced that we're gonna, that our tourism industry is gonna continue to grow. Um, and that because we have so established that identity now that we're interwoven in the internet, you know, the, the sort of the powwow travel agency network. Um, and it's unlikely we're gonna get Unwoven, but <laughs> okay. okay. So we, we have talked about days of the week. We've talked about hours of the day. We've talked about rates, different types of rates, daily rates. Sorry, full day rates, hourly rates. Do we have any other design? And and Dave is going to ask us to send us a couple of the matrices from other communities. Uh, do we have any other questions of Dave tonight? Just the enforcement function. Um, that's your in-house enf uh, enforcement. Um, because at our last meeting, we, this, the consensus was that our back office um, uh, capabilities, they're not far enough advanced for us to take a, a formal enforcement you know, company on so that we were gonna uh, make use of yours, which is yes. a, a, a the phone operated. I just would like to understand it a little better. Yeah, so I'll give you kind of the quick the quick overview of it. Um, it's we call it N force, like the the letter N force. Um, yeah. So it's right, like you said, Jack. It's um, you know, phone based. Basically, any any internet device you can access it. It's just a a website you're accessing yeah. and what you're really doing is looking at park mobile transactions. So um, there's no, the one kind of, it, it, it's a, it's a free thing we offer our consumers either as a backup or small village like cold spring um, that doesn't have an enforcement system. You can, you can see who's paid those transactions in a particular zone or space, et cetera. Um, but there's no ticket issuance tied to it. So in other words, you still need some kind of method, whether it's paper tickets or a, a separate system. So yeah. that's the one drawback. There's, you can see those transactions on a tablet or a phone, um, but you can't issue a ticket from it, if that makes sense. Okay. Is there a record when our traffic person goes and goes on and force and someone is there? at a certain time and it shows that they're in violation. Is that memorialized anywhere if he writes them a ticket? Um, not, not in our system. It's, real, it's just, it's just a, 
just a method to see. So it's, it's again, it's a backup. It's kind of a, usually a, a client would look at it as kind of a temporary stopgap until they, until they got some sort of uh, enforcement system. And we, we have partners who do that, that are very kind of uh, cost effective for small villages. And we could probably put you in touch. Um, but it's not, not a huge, not a huge investment. Um, or you could use the enforce and then, you know, paper ticket, but uh, I think the so, problem at least a, a method to see. So Lex, Lex sent me a video um, of huh. Enforce, uh -huh. and, and what you do is you pull out your phone and you you get onto Enforce and you enter the zone number, and it provides you with an alphabetic listing uh -huh. of every single license plate and and state which has which is currently in a paid state. So if you're looking at a car and the license number is 123-456 and you're looking at your phone and there's no one, two, and it's, it, as I say, it's alphabetic. If you're going by zone, it's alphabetic. You just scroll, it's not there, right from the ticket. If you're, nice. in, a, if you're in a zone that is parked by space, you enter that zone number, parked by space, and it then tells you which spaces are paid in a numer in an ascending numeric order. So you just walk into the parking lot, show me the spaces, and if somebody's parked in 17 and 17 isn't listed, they get a ticket. So the temporary um, uh, uh, solution, which Dave described, seems to me that that's what we should go with when we first get started. Okay. To your knowledge, Dave, has, has um, Enforce ever been challenged by someone who's been given a ticket? I mean, there doesn't seem to be any way of documenting. Well, for the user, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the quick answer is we have like 400 in some cities, so everybody challenges, you know, parking yeah. tickets, they get them. You know? um, so it, regardless of the system, people challenge them, but the nice thing is, um, the the in our in our reporting system, right. the town staff can see if somebody paid and what the duration was based on uh -huh. the play, and the end user. So it's very easy if the end user wants to appeal. If they were issued an error, they can show a screenshot. Um, whatever your appeal process is, they can say, "Hey, I paid from uh, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m." I have the confirmation in the park mobile. They can see their account. You can look that up and then you can calibrate that with the date or, or time stamp on, um, you know, that's on the ticket. So they have the proof and you can calibrate it with, uh, with our system. Okay. Yeah, we, we do that now, Dave, uh, Jack. There are a, f a few number of people that, that challenge their tickets, uh, but I can go online in the report as as Dave said, you can show that this license plate number or this space number, someone parked there at this time, they paid for that amount. Okay. Um, and now there there have been situations where I've said, okay, there seems to be a question here. They said they paid, they asked for a three dollar payment and they got charged twenty five dollars. On that one. It, Give them back. Give them back their money. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just I'm just thinking of, of the you know. Of, of we take we take on a lot since we're such a uh, consumer facing product. We take a lot of those calls um, where somebody gets a ticket, and we have a member services department that's excellent, based in Atlanta. They field you know lots of these calls every day from all over the country, um, and they would give them. The information on how to appeal and they usually give them any kind of tips too, like um you know oh you might want to do this time next time in the app it might help you avoid a ticket um turn on you know we have a text reminder where it'll give you a warning 15 minutes before so they'll kind of talk them through it like hey next time you can avoid the ticket and then they'll say hey i can't i can't take the appeal for you you have to do that through the village of cold spring Go to their website. Here's the URL that you know, or go to go to Village Hall. And they'll talk you through the appeal process. 
Okay, and so you know, as I say, I just want to make sure that we're not setting up something with an unresolvable, you know, problem. That's all enough, and not resulting in chaos. But if if there is, if you can do, you know, what I'm saying, you can, yeah. you can. That sounds fine. Anything else for Dave? No, thank you, Dave. Dave, thank you very much. Evan, anything from you? Rebecca's shaking her head, so she's a no. Nope. Okay. Nope. Then, um, so what I would recommend is that we get back together next Wednesday night, um, and we'll go back over what we need, what our next steps are. I've just gotten information from John first that although our village coach does not talk about on street paid parking, we'll need to add something like that. But he's provided me with some um, some examples from some other communities that have worked for them. So I'll work on that. Okay. Dave, and yeah, thanks ahead. so much, everybody. Appreciate your time. And Thank you, Dave. Dave, if Lex could send in those those sort of paradigms for us, that would be really helpful. Okay. Sure, sure. Yep. I'll, uh, I'll connect with Lex in the morning and, and fill them in. So thanks, everyone. Happy. Thank, uh, you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Thank you. Yeah, same to you. <laughs> Good night. That's right. Rebecca, you've got three extra hours to drink tequila. <laughs> I know. I was going to make my father a, a michelada, you know, that uh -huh. Mexican beer drink, uh -huh. lemon. Uh -huh. Where are you exactly? But Mexicans don't, Mexicans don't celebrate uh, Cinco de Mayo. They don't? Not really. It's more, it's more like a, yeah, I think it's a very American thing. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think it's Where, just. Whereabouts in California are you? In Orange County. So I'm currently in Fullerton. Very nice, very nice. I hope you have a successful trip out there. Thank yep. see you. Next, see you next week. Good night, Thank everybody. You. Good night, Marie. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.